Hello and welcome to this screencast on setting up Zitadel for user management and application security. In this demo, we will secure a React-based single-page application using Zitadel. You will learn how to use the OIDC proof key for code exchange, or better known as the Pixie flow, to securely log in your users to Zitadel, and how to access protected resources. By the end of this screencast, you will have a better understanding of how to use Zitadel to improve the security of your own applications. So let's get started. Go to zitadel.com and click on Start for free. You will now be taken to the customer portal. You need to add yourself as a user of the customer portal in order to create a Zitadel instance. So add in a first name, last name, provide an email address and provide an organization name. In order to use Zitadel, you must agree to their terms of service and privacy policies. So check these boxes and click on the Let's Go button. You will now receive an email to verify your email address. You can go to your email and follow the sign up process through the email or just continue here by clicking on the sign in button. I'm going to proceed by clicking on the sign in button. Now you will be prompted for a code. So let's check the email for the code. Go to your inbox and find the verification email from Zitadel. You'll have to copy this code and paste it here. Now we need to provide a password. Make sure that your password matches the given criteria and click next. The user is now activated. Click on next to log in. You have to log in with the username and password that you just provided and click on next. You should set up two factor authentication, but we will skip this step for now. So click on skip. And now you will have to create an instance. An instance is the top level entity in Zitadel that represents a deployment of Zitadel for a registered account. You can create multiple instances to suit your specific needs. This includes instances for development, production, or user acceptance testing, as well as instances for different clients or applications. For example, you might create an instance for each product in a business to customer scenario, or an instance for each tenant or customer in a business to business scenario. So it all depends on a use case and each instance requires a separate user registration. So let's just go ahead and create an instance. Provide a name for your instance. Your organization name is already selected for you. Select the free plan and click on the continue button. Now you need to pick a user to manage your instance. It can be you or someone else. So provide the username and password accordingly. I'm going to go ahead with the same username and click on create. The instance creation process will take a few seconds, so hang on for a bit. There you go. Now you will see the details of your first instance. You can click on visit to go to your instance, but first you must log in with the username and password you just provided for your instance. Skip the two-factor authentication for now by clicking skip. Please don't skip this step in production. And there you go you now have access to your instance. The next step is to create a project. A project in Zitadel is a logical separation within an organization. A project is a container for apps, roles, and authorization policies for the resources it contains. So to create a project in the instance you just created, click on create project. You have to insert a name and click on the continue button and the project has been created. All we have to do now is create an application in the project, which will allow our React application to access protected resources through the use of the OpenID Connect protocol. So go ahead and provide a name for the app and select user agent because the application we are trying to secure is a single page application and click on continue. Select Pixie because we recommend the use of authorization code in combination with Proof key for code exchange for all web applications. The redirect URL in your application is where the Zitadel authorization server redirects the user after they have been authenticated. So set your redirect URI to http colon slash slash local host colon 3000 callback. And the post logout URI should be set to http colon slash slash localhost colon 3000 and click on continue. 
So now you will be presented with the details of your application for review. If everything looks fine, click on create. So after that, a window will appear which shows you your client ID. And if that looks good, click on close. And on this screen, you will notice some warnings at the top. So these warnings are displayed because the URLs for our application are using HTTP instead of HTTPS. So to resolve this, we will need to update our URLs. But there is a workaround so that we can continue using HTTP during the development of this app. So to proceed with HTTP, go to redirect settings on the left and activate development mode. You need to click on save. So now if you go to projects and project one, you will see the React SPA app listed as an application. Now we need to get our hands on the client ID and the relevant OIDC endpoints, namely the issuer URL and the user info endpoint to protect our React application. So go to the application we just created and click on configuration to access the client ID that's shown here. You would have already seen the client ID earlier and saved it somewhere. If you couldn't, this is the place to find it. The issuer URL and user info endpoint can be accessed by clicking on URLs on the left. So let's briefly discuss what the URLs are used for. The issuer URL is the base URL for the OIDC provider, which is Zitadel. By providing the issuer URL, the authorization and token endpoints can be determined by the OIDC library you use in your application. The user info endpoint is used to retrieve information about the user. You need an access token to access the user info endpoint and other protected resources. So make note of the URLs for issuer and user info endpoint because we will need them when we are coding our application. And with that, Configuring Zitadel for our React application is complete. Let's start coding our app. To make things faster, let's get the code from this GitHub repository. I have provided the link to this repository in the description below. So let's copy the repository URL and now open Visual Studio Code. So go ahead and open a new terminal and let's clone the repository. So make sure that you are in the directory where you want to clone the React app. So now that the cloning process is done, let's navigate into the React project directory. Make sure you have Node.js and React installed on your machine in order to run the application. But first, let's quickly go through the React code to understand what does what. The app.js file is the root component of the React app that initializes the OIDC flow and manages user session. In the components folder, the login.js file corresponds to the login page, and this is what the user is going to see first. The callback component handles the callback from the authorization server, Zitadel, after the user logs in and displays information about the user. It also handles the logout functionality. AuthConfig exports an object with configuration values for the OpenID Connect flow. So let's take a look at the configuration values. Authority is the URL of the authorization server. We have to replace the authority value with the issuer URL of Zitadel. So let's do that. Go to the Zitadel console, go to URLs and copy the issuer URL and paste it here. Next is the client ID, which is the unique identifier for the client application. Let's replace this with our client ID. Go to configuration and copy client ID and paste it here. Next, you get the redirect URI. This matches the redirect URI we added on Zitadel earlier. Response type is the type of response expected from the authorization server, which is authorization code. Scope refers to the permissions requested from the user. The post logout redirect URI refers to the URL to redirect to after the user logs out, which is also the same as the one we provided on Zitadel earlier. The user info endpoint is the URL of the endpoint to retrieve the user's information. So we have to replace this. Go to URLs and find the user info endpoint, copy to clipboard and paste it here. The response mod is the method to use to send the authorization response and the code challenge method is the method to use to generate the pixie code challenge. 
Make sure you save the changes to the authconfig.js file. Before we can run the app, we need to install the dependencies listed in the package.json file. So you will see that we are using the OIDC client TS package to handle the OIDC flow in our application in addition to the other node packages. So let's run npm install to install the dependencies. And now we can run npm start to start the React server. The app will be open for you in the browser or else go ahead and open your browser and navigate to localhost 3000. Click on the login button and you will be redirected to the Zitadel login page. So you can either select the user that we already created or another user. I'm going to go ahead and select the user I created and I'm going to enter the password and click on next. And if you enter the correct login credentials, you will be redirected to the callback page, which will display your user information. You can click on log out to log out of the application and you will be taken to the login page again. And finally, to see if the user has been successfully logged out and the user session has been terminated, click on the login button again and select the same user you logged in with earlier. And you will see that you have to re-enter the password to log in again. And this brings us to the end of this quick start tutorial. Now, this was just bare bones of what you can do with Zitadel, but I hope this video gave you a good introduction on how you can get started. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos. Thanks for watching.